mic has been checked. Hello. Bipeds uh, of various shapes and sizes and with different hopes and dreams. My name is John and welcome to this here Spinal Waves class. I am joined as always, or at least for the second time, by my wonderful assistant, Ignis, the magnanimous, the effervescent, the the cat. And today, Ignis and I would like to bring you on a bit of a journey into the realm of thoracic waves. So yeah, in this class we're going to focus on the thoracic portion of our spines and we're going to figure out how to move that particular region. And we're going to do so by working on four different drills. Two tide exercises, a standing tide and a bent sit tide. Our third exercise is a ripple, the thoracic seesaw, and our fourth exercise is the thoracic wave. And I believe, Ignis, that it is due time for us to begin with our first exercise, the standing tide. On cue. This is also a cat. His name is Ula. He, um, he's also here. Now, standing tide. Feet shoulder width apart. If you feel the need, then point your toes out a tiny bit. And from here, bring your arms in front of you. Now we're going to breathe in, and as we do so, we bring the arms out to the sides and we arch our spines. And we stay in this position for a bit, just to recognize the sensations that we get here. A nice stretch in the abs, perhaps, maybe a stretch in the pecs as well, and a contraction between the shoulder blades and along the spine. And now we're going to breathe out as we bring the arms in front of us we tuck our tailbone underneath us as much as we can and we round our spine. And from here, we want to stretch our arms forward and notice a nice stretch between the shoulder blades, along the spine, and perhaps a contraction in the abs and the glutes. Now we're going to breathe in again and we open up the arms and we arch our spines and we take up a whole lot of space and we breathe out we bring the arms forward and we round our spines as much as we can and now breathing in open up and breathing out closing Breathing in, open up, arch the spine, stretch your chest and your abs, and now breathe out, close, hiding your chest, hiding your diaphragm, and breathe in, open, and breathe out, close. Breathe in, open. Breathe out, close. Paying attention to the entire length of the spine. Breathe in and open. Breathe out and close. One more time. Breathe in and open. And breathe out and close and get back up into a standing position. And now we're going to move on to the second tide exercise. This one is a bit more specific to the wave that we're going to practice. We're going to sit down. We're going to allow a slight bend in the knees. And depending on your anatomy, you might find it comfortable to keep the knees pointing up or out to the sides. My hip sockets are shallower than the Kardashian family combined, so I enjoy keeping the knees out a tiny bit. Now from here, we're going to do the tide one more time, but this time we want to make sure that our pelvis stays put. So we're using the feedback 
that we get from the floor to make sure that we don't rock backwards and forwards on our pelvis. Because the knees are in front of us, it's going to prevent a bit of motion in the lower part of the spine, the lumbar spine. And so we get to focus now more on the thoracic part. So from this seated position, make sure that you fix the position, bring your arms in front of you. And now as you breathe in, you arch and you aim your chest up. And now bring the arms in front of you as you breathe out and you close without changing the position of the pelvis. And again, breathe in, open up, point your chest up towards the ceiling. And now bring the arms forward and close. Bring your chest down and in. And now breathe in, chest up and out. Breathe out, bring your chest in and down. Again, breathe in, chest up and out as much as you can muster. And breathe out, chest in and down. Four more times, a bit faster. Breathe in, breathe out and in and out and in and out and in and out and relax get back up into a standing position and now we're going to move on to the ripple exercise now for this we can either imagine that we have an invisible barrier in front of and behind of our pelvis. Or we can use an actual barrier. Again, to prevent the pelvis from moving forwards or backwards. Now I'm going to use this actual barrier. I'm going to glue my pelvis to this barrier so that the upper portion of my spine can move freely without any movement of the lower portion or the hip or the pelvis. Now, from here, it is time for us to assume our power pose, which looks like this. So in this position, I want you to imagine that you have a laser pointing out from your sternum. And this laser should now be pointing diagonally downwards. And from here, we're going to bring our chest as far forward as possible while still making sure that the laser is pointing diagonally downwards. And now we bring our chest up so that the laser is pointing diagonally upwards. Now we're going to slide the chest as far back as possible without moving the pelvis and without changing the angle of the laser. And now we go into our power pose again, aiming our sternum laser down. And again, we slide forward, chest points down, chest points up, and we slide backwards. Power po pose, chest points down, we slide forward, chest points up, we slide back, chest points down as much as you can, chest slides as far forward as possible, chest points up as much as possible, chest slides back while maintaining the angle of the sternum, chest points down as much as possible. And we go forward and up and back and down and forward and up and back and down again forward forward 
forward, up, 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 back, and down, again, forward, up, back, and down, and relax. And if you use an actual barrier, get it out of the way. Now, for those of you who did the, the class prior to this one, you now know that this thoracic seesaw is going to be transmogrified into a thoracic wave. And there's really nothing special to it. The only thing we're going to do now is to make sure that no position is more important than the other. And we're going to move with an even fluid speed. So, without the barrier, what I like to do in order to make my pelvis stay put is to go into a slight posterior pelvic tilt, which means that I'm diminishing the distance between my waistband and my belly button by just a smidge. And then I lock my pelvis in place by contracting my glutes. Now from here, we are now together going to go into our power pose. Chest is pointing down. We slide our chest forward and then up goes the laser. Chest goes back and chest goes down. And we slide forward, chest goes up and back and down and forward and up and back and down and we continue forward and up and back and down and continue now in your own tempo and I want you to try to identify a range of motion that allows you to move fluidly. And despite what many might say, bigger is not always better, especially when it comes to fluidity. It's often better to start off small and then allow the wave to grow once you've found your groove, your mojo, your special sauce. So let's now see how small we can make this wave. Try to make it small. Try to notice the sensations that allow you to move fluidly and connect with those sensations. And now let's see if we can't make the movement a tiny bit bigger. Paying attention to the pelvis making sure that it's not going anywhere. And let's make the wave a bit bigger still. And now let's try to make the biggest wave that we can create. And now gradually reduce the volume. And smaller. And our goal now is to just bit by bit reduce the volume. 
so that the wave is almost invisible. And relax. Thus concludes this Spinal Waves class on thoracic waving. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.